Well, good morning, everybody. Next day. Oh, little rabbit, buddy. <laughs> I'm just coming to work here. It's 10 till 7. I figured this stuff was they'd stay. This uh, stuff would uh, stay here. And they'll come back this morning and pick it up. <laughs> so I don't know what's going on down here. Whether they got the rail all fixed up yet or not, I don't know. We'll have to... <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. I'll have to take a ride down here and see what's going on. Caterpillar 583K. Okay, I gotta get uh, I gotta get in there and get my clothes changed, and we'll be back. See what we got down below. All right. Well, we can ride down here and we'll see if we can see any activity from this point of view. Oh, wonderful! Track is back in service. It appears there's nothing, uh, no cars sitting around here. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Great. Okay, guys worked all night. We actually have a train coming back loaded. He'll be here in about uh, 20 minutes with the first loaded train. Ah, uh, yeah. Right in, right in through here was our uh, point of derailment, and uh, I was able to get these ties respiked. This is a gauge rod that helps hold your gauge. The guy on midnight shift that worked all night uh, was telling me that right in here we had five soft ties. Uh, so I think that might have been a big part of a problem. The, the heat yesterday could have helped. When that heat expands that rail, uh, that could have helped roll it over, plus the train going through here. I think a little bit of combination of three factors involved. Uh, there, today, we have um, the Prentice truck came last night, but they only had one guy with them. Uh, they put some, a few ties in. We're going to put more ties in after this train dumps off. It's coming in. We're going to put some, uh, more ties in here. And, uh, I'll have to get her tamped up. But at least we are holding gauge now. And, uh, we'll get some better wood in here. Now this tie here is shot. Okay. There we go. It's good to see him back in business. Good to see him back in business. All righty. It's not even that story. Or what the... <laughs> what was that one TV show? That's the name of that tune that guy always said. <laughs> I think he was a detective. All right. Got another gauge rod they put in up here. And I believe there's another, there's another one right up there. So okay. Hold that track tight so we can get the, uh, yeah. Look at this. Okay. Wow. Guess what? I got the, I got the pot on this morning. Gas up high and they're cooking. I got all kind of coal at the prep plant. And I got to switch, uh, I got to send the, uh, they're sending both trains out. He's gonna this one, big one's uh, gonna dump off, and then they're gonna send the uh, short trip out. Okay. 
But I got I got to as soon as the, as soon as this uh, locomotive clears, I've got to uh, I got to fix over there at the uh, joint bar. It uh, holds the switch point on. So I got a joint bar here. I get get ready here. See it right over there. I got I got to fix that. So. Uh, Uh-oh, I don't know what happened there. Get that uh, short trip out of here. All right. The track don't look real bad down through there. I'm gonna have to tamp it after we get ties in though. Okay, I gotta get to work. <laughs> well, we got the uh, the big uh, trips up there at the mine loading right now. We sent the the little trip out of here also. I uh, put a regular joint bar. I'm gonna show you this. Put a regular joint bar on there because uh, we had to get these trains moving. Uh, I didn't have a lot of time to root around for the right joint bar. That is the wrong joint bar for this switch point. However, it was good enough to get the train out of here. Uh, let me show you here. This one over here. You see, on this side, it's got two holes. This is a short one. It's for a switch point. All right. And this one here has the three holes. So this is for a regular joint in a track. Uh, but it's no big deal because I do have another, I have a whole switch point kit down below. And uh, it has all of these plus the this plates and everything. But we're going to change this switch point here because it's bent. All right. And uh, currently are waiting on a grapple truck operator to show up. All right, but I wanted to show you that, the difference between these joint bars. All right, okay. I'll show you over here. Oh, bend it, God. Okay, I have a really hard time seeing uh, what's on my phone with the sun behind me like that. But you can see I got that pretty good, but it is, a lot, it is a one hole shorter than uh, this, and look at this, China. <laughs> no wonder it got bent up, huh? <laughs> All right, we, uh, we got the track safe, and we're gonna replace, uh, I think I marked, there's either, I think 17 ties down through there. So this is our, uh, this is our assumption for now that the spikes came out, loosened the rail, and the rail rolled over. Wide gauge caused the wheel climb derailment. All right, very good. Okay, they're running coal like crazy. The, 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 main, the short trip just came in and went down the uh, runaround track. He's getting, he's going to be bringing the locomotive up, go in and get that cut of cars, the little cut of cars, take them out here, and then take them down and dump them. This one, the big trip, the main trip, he's on his way back to the mine. He just got dumped off. So we're doing a roll by inspection here. Things are moving along. I don't like this, I don't like this, I don't like this down here at the switch. We got a 54 inch gauge. The uh, switch point is bent. Uh, but uh, what are you going to do? We're going to change the switch point as soon as we possibly can.
good, Mr. AJ. Uh, Mr. Morgan, the uh, main trip's cleared to switch. You're good to come out. Okay. I've got to tamp this this morning. This is a uh, Saturday morning, my first day back. So, uh, there in the night, they, we, they uh, put some gauge rods on. I'll tell you more about gauge rods here in a little bit. So this is what they got. I gotta get some of this cleaned up before I can tamp it so I can see all the ties. It's a mess, it's an absolute mess. And there's a little uh, line spot in here. In, in other words, the track alignment's not right. Okay. Let's get down here and uh, look at this switch point. It's just, we used to have halter in here every three months. We're right above the young loader down there. And, uh, in here vacuuming all this up every three months but then after Contour filed the bankruptcy money dried up and there was no money left to do this kind of work and it's been about six months if I recall right that they have uh, vacuumed this out so got some new ties in here you saw in that uh, first video these ties here were shot but uh, right up there where that goofy line spot is in that curve and the dip that's where it derailed up there but this was caused the a goofy line spot did not cause the derailment the wide gauge did the loose spikes the bad ties again and I'll tell you later in the video you can't make a good track inspection with all that coal with that much coal on top of those tie plates and spikes, you can't make a you can't make a track inspection. That's why it's very important that this stuff get cleaned up, so I can see what I got and prevent uh, derailments from happening. Here's your new switch point. This uh, here was bent, so they put a new one on. Here's your new switch point. Okay, very good. They uh, got the right bar on there. I'll tell you more about that bar in the here in the later on in the video. Uh, yeah, we had a gauge spot right through here, so they got it regaged. See the new spikes down in there. All right. Okay, I've got a regulator up here, and he's going to try to clean this up. Then i got to get to tamping this this morning. All right, we'll be back with more. Oh, don't you go anywhere. <laughs> okay, here's when we got in the track. This is curve 14. And uh, I put this in here about two years ago. We had some pretty bad ties in here. And uh, so we could get a machine up here to replace ties, I put this gauge rod in to hold the gauge. Clamps there. I'll show you a different one here in a little bit. Uh, really serves no purpose right now, but uh, just never ended up taking it back out. So there you go. This is this the whole curve has been cribbed out, cribbed out since then. And we put a bunch of new ties in it. It's in pretty good shape. It's in real good shape. And uh, here's the pipeline. That's a 70% slope up there. And you will see videos of that sometime in the future. I've got them made. That was uh, over two years ago they dug this too. And I just haven't showed them yet. Okay. We'll show you here a little different uh, gauge rod. 
All right. So one thing that uh, I'll add here, the, the gauge is the distance between here and here. And you measure it 5 eighths of an inch down from the top of the rail head. That's how, where it's measured. This is 56 and one half inches, which is standard gauge. Of course, you all know Gary, Nary gauge is three foot. And our, actually our track underground is 42 inch gauge. And track in the outside shop, outside yard, I mean. So anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, when, I, when I refer to the gauge between the two rails, I usually spell it G-A-G-E. Uh, a lot of people spell it G-A-U-G-E, -E, and that's okay. Both spellings, both words have the same meanings, except for G-A-U-G-E also implies uh, like a tire pressure gauge or an oil pressure or a water temperature gauge. Okay, but typically uh, in track, I will refer to the actual gauge, the distance between the rails, as G-A-G-E. And uh, now if I'm talking about a narrow gauge railroad, uh, all the narrow gauge railroads call themselves and spell it by G-A-U-G-E. All right. So either, uh, uh, either spelling is correct for talking about the track gauge, but uh, just a little quirk of my own. And uh, many people do call it. Uh, spell it G-A-G-E, and a lot more people call it actually uh, G-A-U-G-E. So either one's correct. All right, just like throw that in there. Okay, here's another. Uh, I just showed you that last one that was like this. We have another gauge rod, which I do not have any available to show you. Uh, they're all used ones that I do have. The threads are on down through here. And then they'll have a nut, and then the washer, and then another one of these that are facing this way. Again, I don't have any of those, not in use to show you. But the nice thing, with the, the, this rod, all you can do is pull the gauge in with the clamp over here. See the base of the web rail goes in here. Uh, with the clamp over here, then you can also push the gauge out if that's what needs to be done for that alrighty so there you have it okay I think that's gonna pretty much wrap it up for this video and I uh, want to thank you thank you thank you thank you very much for watching and uh, <laughs> you uh, you keep it on the rails and keep pulling grade <laughs> okay that's railroading <laughs>